what you see here on the screen is uh, world's smallest test tube, carbon nanotube. So it's essentially made out of single layer of carbon. And what we're seeing here is two side walls of this nanotube as two parallel lines. And on this uh, electron microscopy image, you can see that carbon nanotube is not empty. There is something inside. So you start seeing these vertical lines, and these are molecules. So this nanotube happened to be filled with about 50 molecules of perchlorocoronin which is a small, medium-sized organic molecule, uh, and it looks something like that. That's the model of perchlorocoronin. So you can see that um, it's got mostly carbon atoms in the structure, but it's got some chlorine atoms. So they, I represent them with these white atoms. Uh, um, um, but I run out of white atoms here, so you can see that uh, this is just sort of open age on this. So don't pay attention to that. Look at this one. So that's, that's what this molecule looks like. It's got 12 chlorine atoms around the carbon. So, and I have about 50 molecules like this in the nanotube, and we're looking at them edge on. So this is another one. Uh, so when we take the movie, we are looking at this molecule edge on, and they appear as uh, short vertical lines uh, stacked like a stack of pancakes within the nanotube. So as we play this movie, we can see that these molecules are not still, so they are moving around. They're changing their orientation, and they're forming some elongated structures after a while. So, so you start seeing that these molecules are not perpendicular to the nanotube anymore. They form something more complex, uh, something longer and something with a more complex structure. So what's happening there, as we take this movie, obviously we shine electron beam through the nanotube that hits the molecules. And as this electron beam hit, hits the molecule, we can break the chemical bonds. So you can imagine that uh, fast electron of electron beam collides with a atoms of carbon and chlorine, and as they do so, provided that the energy of this collision is uh, sufficiently energetic, we can break chemical bonds on the edge of this molecule. So what I'm doing, I'm removing the chlorine atom, one is gone, second one is gone, and we ended up with two very reactive carbon atoms now. So obviously this molecule has a neighbor and is going to react with, with the neighbor inside carbon nanotube. So that's the neighbor of this molecule, this is the first molecule, and they undergo uh, reaction of Diels-Solder cycle addition, which is essentially addition of one molecule to another, and we form this elongated structure, which is also not linear anymore. So it's not a pancake, it's two pancakes forming the sort of clamshell uh, structure. And it's exactly what we're seeing here. We see longer structures on the screen, they're not linear anymore, and but this is not the end of the reaction. This is just the intermediate of the reaction, something that is transient species, something that is actually quite difficult to detect by any other methods. What happens with this um, intermediate is that obviously it still uh, is exposed to the beam of uh, electron and we start breaking bonds between the carbon atoms in this uh, sort of bridging structure there. So what happens then is that we, um, I'll try to rearrange it like this. So we remove two carbon atoms and we moved to the to the other side of the uh, molecule, we're forming a hexagon and another one. Right, so that's sort of you know already taking a different shape. So the last thing, we just need to rearrange chemical bonds around the carbon atoms in the center. And you see what we've done? We've done completely flat molecule. It's linear molecule again. And this is the beginning of graphene nanoribbon. That's the product that is formed in this reaction. And you can see that the dark lines become longer and longer and longer because more molecules come and join to this end uh, until eventually they transform into the uh, nanoribbon of graphene, which is decorated with chlorine atoms. You can see these chlorine atoms as dark dots. And if you are uh, very observant, you can see that this nanoribbon does not stay still. It also moves around. And a twist in the nanotube, you can start seeing this helical twist. And uh, why is that? It's because the nanoribbon structure is fairly soft. So any distortion uh, sort of, uh, of this way appears as a dark line uh, um, twisting within the carbon nanotube over time. So that is the direct indication that we are forming graphene nanoribbons in the nanotube. This is a new chemical reaction. This is something that uh, uh, was a bit of a surprise. So uh, apart from the fact that we can uh, we prove the principle that uh, transmission electron microscopy can be used for stop frame 
filming chemical reactions and we can produce essentially a movie of the chemical reaction from the starting material to the products, we also discovered new reaction by accident. And this is a quite valuable reaction too, uh, because graphene nanoribbons are among uh, some of the most interesting, most topical materials for uh, new types of electronics, um, because they combine fantastic physical properties of graphene plus uh, the possibility to control electronic band gap, which means they can form bases for uh, uh, transistors and other devices. We uh, believe that this is uh, potentially a new way to discover new chemical reactions, not only confirm already existing reactions and uh, understand mechanisms of these reactions better, which is obviously quite important for any chemist, any scientist, but also discover s something that is completely new, something we didn't know about before. Just slightly rearrange this side because it's, it looks a bit tense. But I think it just, I mean, yeah, that's it. It will be a little bit more hexagonal. Now it's better. It's quite satisfying to have something like this in your hands, yeah, because that is exactly the representation of the experimental movie on the screen. So that's, I think, what makes chemistry real.